to Madley Free Will Baptist Church. We thank all of you that's tuning in tonight to, to watch the service. And uh, like always, we hope and pray that you get a blessing out of it. And uh, me and Sister Ellen had talked, and there was a lot of people commenting down through these videos of uh, remember our lost, remember this one, remember that one. We all know we got several uh, that needs to be remembered. And we was talking about maybe uh, opening up with prayer. So we're going to bow our heads and we're going to ask the Lord to bless this service and bless your homes Amen. and remember all of your requests. So if you would, we'll, we'll uh, bow our heads and pray. Father God in heaven, we approach your throne today. And Lord, we're so thankful for your mercies, Lord, and your love, a Father, that endures, Father, forever. We thank you, Lord, for your, your compassion upon us, Lord, your your grace, God, this evening, Father, that you have given us so freely. And God, we just ask you, Lord, as we come into, Father, thy presence to uh, do this service. God, I pray that, Lord, right now that you go into every home. Father, that every heart, Lord, and ear would be open to your word. And, Father, to the Spirit's dealing. I ask you, Lord, right now for all those spoken requests that's been made. Father, on these videos, people crying out for their loss. People crying out for their loved ones. God, I pray that you'd please remember all those, Father, and we pray, uh, God, that they might tune in to this, and Lord, we might see them saved. Remember all of our uh, health people, Lord, that's right in the front lines. God, we don't want to forget them. And Lord, may you take this coronavirus and miraculously heal our land. Lord, that you'd receive all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Bless the singing, bless the preaching, God, and most of all, build your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. When I ask Brother Brian would come and sing us a congregation. Good evening to our Thursday night crowd. I'll tell you what, uh, this song, uh, I look forward to singing this anytime time we do it at church because I know it livens our crowd up and I know it can liven you up at home as well. I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on.
I figure Michael want me to sing his favorite song tonight. He said, well, we'll get our guitar and we'll, we'll sing that. And then Sister Ellen is going to, to come tonight to sing that. <clears throat> He leads me beside the steel waters, and He gives the greenest pastures for my bed. Thank you, Lord. He restores my soul in a world that's grown so poor, and sometimes. He pours oil on my head. The Lord is my shepherd. I am so glad I am his lamb. He takes care of me in a world.
This life will give you a broken dream Full of sorrow and pain Here's what you do Turn around, don't look back again Just face that new day before you Oh, place that heartache in my Jesus' hand For He will mend broken dreams Tomorrow. I 
Heavenly Father and our Lord and our God. And Lord, as we come, God, before thy throne, and God of grace and mercy, and God, the time and the hour has come, and Lord, that we might deliver, God, your precious, and God, your holy word tonight. And God, that in a time when the Lord has seemed like so many, and God, are in a state, Father, of panic, and God, in a time of uncertainty, Lord, I'm glad that you're still on the throne today. And God, you're not up there figuring things out. And God, you're not wondering about what tomorrow holds. For you're the creator of heaven and earth. And Lord, today you know exactly God what is going on. And God, I'm glad my trust God is in you tonight as the giver and the taker of life. And now, Lord, the time of the Irish come. And Lord, that we might begin to preach. And Lord, your precious, holy, and God, your righteous word. Feed the flock of God and stir the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls. And Lord, may it draw us closer unto thee. And for those that don't know him. And Lord, might this be the day and the hour. And Lord, they cry out to you tonight. Use thy servant, we pray. And Lord, we'll be very careful. And Lord, to give you all praise, honor, and glory. And in Jesus' name we pray. And Lord, we beg it all the sin and use me, Lord. And in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And now the Bible said that there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. That man was a perfect and an upright. The Bible said, and one that feared God, and one that eschewed evil. I thought about the description of Job here. Brother, we find out that he is a man of God. I thought as we begin to think about Job, brother, Job was a man that brother feared God and wanted to do what was right with the Holy God. He wasn't a man that would say one thing, brother Brandon, and do another. But Job practiced what he preached. He was a man that a brother whose heart was after God. I wonder tonight, is your heart after God this evening? Are you a godly man or a godly woman? Does God know who you are in the part of remission of sin? Do you know Jesus tonight? Brother, he knew. Brother, thank God, God. And the Bible begins to tell us about Job. He began to shun or to stay away from evil. I believe that's what a child of God will do. When their heart gets fixed on God, I believe, thank God, that you turn your back to sin and turn your heart to God. Job was that man. And so the Bible said in verse 2 of Job 1, And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. He was the father of ten children. My, what a family that Job had. And the Bible said in verse number 3, It 
tells us of all that Job owned. His substance also was uh, 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels, uh, 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses, uh, and a very great household, uh, uh, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Uh, uh, Job was a wealthy man. Uh, uh, not only was he a godly man, uh, uh, not only uh, did he have his eyes fixed on God, uh, uh, but God had blessed him with children. Uh, I tell you, children are a blessing from the Lord. Uh, uh, you ought to get yours tonight uh, and thank God for them. Uh, uh, brother, for they're a gift from God uh, uh, for us to take care of today. Uh, and so he had ten children, the Bible said, a wealthy man, a rich man. Uh, uh, brother, thank the Lord. Uh, God had been good to Job. Uh, and the Bible said in verse number four, uh, that his sons went and feasted in their house, everyone his house, uh, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Uh, I think I'd be right saying tonight, uh, I thank God that they were a close family. Uh, uh, daddy and his children and his wife and no doubt they love one another everything is going good brother and verse number 5 is going to tell us tonight what kind of daddy that he was and the Bible said and it was so in the days of their feasting were gone about and that Job sinned and sanctified them and he rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And thus did Job continually. Do you know what Job is doing? Brother, he's worrying about the spiritual warfare of his children. He's humbling his heart before God, offering up the sacrifices to God on behalf of his children. I tell you today, you want to be a good mommy, a good daddy. You know what? You have your heart right with God. You pray for your children. I tell you, a daddy, a brother that sought God on behalf of his children. I'm glad, Brother Brandon, that one day I had a praying mommy and daddy that sought God on my behalf. My, where would some of us be if somebody hadn't prayed for us, if somebody hadn't went and said, God, have mercy on their soul. And let me tell you, don't you give up in your prayers and praying for your family. Don't give up tonight. God's still on the throne. He's still a changing life. And he's still a saving souls today. Amen. I'm going to praise God. There he is. And brother, he's taking these burnt offerings, offering them to the Lord on behalf of his children. And now, brother, let me tell you, Job had no idea of what was about to take place in his life. He had no idea. Can I tell you tonight, you don't know what tomorrow holds. Brother Brandon, we don't know. But this man is a man that fears God. Brother, he's a man, thank God, that's praying and staying away from evil and keeping his eyes fixed on God. It's going to prepare him for the things that are to come. I'm going to tell you something tonight. The Bible said a man is born of a woman and a few days he's full of 
of trouble. Hey, you don't know what tomorrow holds. How we didn't know we'd be in the mess that we're in today. We had no idea that we'd be quarantined and I'd be preaching to a camera tonight. But let me tell you, there's a God that knew. I brother all about it. We're going to read something about Job. Everything is going good. He's got a healthy family. He's got cattle. I brother, he's got livestock. I brother, he's got all kinds of things. I brother, everything is going okay. He's praying for his children. But look what the Bible said. And now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. Here's the angelic servants of God presenting themselves unto him for he's the one that's over them. And all of a sudden Satan is there. Let me tell you something tonight. You don't believe Satan's real. I feel sorry for you. And brother, he's going to and fro. And brother, none greater. Only God's greater than Satan today. He's got power. I'm not trying to lift him up, but I'm preaching to you. You better wake up and realize that he's real. And there he is among the angelic beings of God. And God began to say to Satan, and the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And did you hear that? Brother, he's loose today. And brother, he's making havoc. How many homes tonight have I heard that have been destroyed? And by the enemy, the devil, a slipping in. And people getting their eyes off the God. I believe that's one reason we're in the shape we're in as a nation tonight. I believe we took our eyes off of God. We've allowed everything to come in. Anything goes, button and bows. It don't matter. And you want to be gay, be gay. And brother, you want to do this and say it's okay. And God still calls right, right, and wrong, wrong. And God said, I'll not be mocked. And for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And so today we'll reap what we sow. And brother, I'll reap what I sow. And so there he is. And brother, the Bible said in verse number 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? And that there is none like him in the earth. He's a perfect or a blankless. He's an upright man. One that feared God and eschewed evil. Hey, Satan, have you considered my servant Job? My, my. And then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for not? He said, Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? And thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. No wonder Job serves you. You blessed him. You've got a hedge about him. Satan says this. Satan says to the Lord, put forth thy hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. Take away everything he has and he will curse you. Oh, now listen. Job had no idea. He didn't know what was going on. All he knew was that he had his eyes fixed on God. He didn't know what tomorrow held, but he knew the one that held tomorrow. And so, brother, the Bible said in verse number 12, permission slip. He is 
greater than Satan. I, I can rest assured tonight I, I, that God is greater than my enemy. I, he gives Satan permission. I, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, I, all that he hath is in thy power. I, only upon himself put not forth thy hand. I, I, so Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. I, I, brother God says, Listen, you can put his faith to the test. I, he said, You can take everything you want, but physically you cannot touch him. I, oh, let me tell you, I, I can just about see Job. I, I, brother, is he? I, I, brother, is there? Satan begins to grin. I, I can just about see old Satan a grinning. I'm saying, what kind of havoc can I cause? I saved them thought for sure, Brandon. He said, I'll take away everything he's got, and he'll curse thee. But let me tell you about Job. Job didn't just serve God one day, and then one day not. Job was a servant of God. And brother, he had a brother served God. And brother, for many, many days, I assume. I don't know the time frame, but I know that he had his heart fixed on God. And all of a sudden, one day, Job began to get word. And you know the story tonight. A brother, he begins to lose. A brother, the, all those uh, the animals, the sheep that he had, uh, the 7,000 sheep, the 3,000 camels, uh, uh, brother, all the oxen, and the uh, uh, brother, the donkeys, he began to lose it all. And before you know it, uh, uh, Job found out, praise God, that all of his children were dead. That's right. I tell you, brother, I couldn't imagine one coming right after another. Brother, you talk about having a bad day. He had a real bad day. But I want you to know I can just see old Job as all this began to take place. It made me think about all that we're seeing today. It made me think about people that are running scared and they're, they're going here and they're going there. Anxiety's up, depression is a, a, a brother in the hearts of people. Uh, they're sitting around worried and uh, afraid. Uh, you know part of that reason is tonight, uh, uh, brother, because our eyes have been turned off of God. Uh, oh, listen tonight. Uh, uh, brother, we've turned our eyes away from God. Uh, and we've looked at the things of the world. Uh, oh, but listen tonight. Uh, uh, Job didn't understand it all. Uh, he didn't have the book of Job to read it all. Uh, but brother, he even, a uh, brother there in chapter 7, wondered about some things. Uh, he had some questions he needed God to answer. But brother, even though he didn't understand it all, in verse number 20, the Bible, at uh, 21, the Bible said, uh, Job said, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked I shall return thither. He said, the Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, and the Bible said, in all of this, uh, uh, Job sinned not, and uh, Lord charge God foolishly. And let me tell you something tonight. A brother Job, a brother kept his eyes fixed on God. A brother, yes, he didn't understand it all. Yes, he received bad advice from his friends. Yes, he had questions he didn't understand, but he never charged God. And brother, listen, his wife has said, brother, he ought to curse God and die. And brother, but listen, he didn't do that. Oh, he kept his eyes fixed on God. And brother, no matter what was coming to Job, he was going to rely on God. And now let's make it personal 
for you tonight. I wonder how about you. I thought as I studied this message almost 22 years now a Sister Hazel I've been serving the Lord. I remember the night I got out of my seat. I remember the night that I come to that old altar. That old fashioned altar. I humbled my heart down before God. I said Lord forgive me of my sin. God had been dealing with my heart. For the Bible said that if we believe and brother if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart and that Jesus brother hath raised from the dead and we shall be saved I humbled my heart there you see it's a heart problem it's not a head problem people say well I believe but they believe in their mind and they don't surrender their heart to God but I said Lord forgive me of my sin I remember the trip I took at Coots Creek Free Will Baptist Church on August 12th of 1998 at a little country church there I tell you I got up and brother from that altar and it felt like a burden had lifted off of me and brother God had forgive me and let me tell you and brother my cousin said I give him brother six months he'll be right back to doing and the same thing that he was a doing I'm going to tell you something tonight that you get a hold of God and brother you won't let it go I'm telling you it's been almost 22 years now and I'm still on my way and I'm still trusting in God I tell you what I've done down through these years of a praying and a talking to God and keeping my eyes fixed on Him has prepared me for days like this and when everybody's running around crazy and do you say preacher do you think it's serious oh yes I do and preacher should we pay attention and listen to what they say and yes we should a preacher does the devil fight your mind and maybe try to make you worry yes he tries Amen. but I tell you my mind is fixed on God I remember a brother getting up from that altar and down through these years a brother what I done has prepared me and let me tell you that the Bible said thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me and let me tell you our minds need to be fixed on God today Amen. they need to be fixed on God that's why I can get up uh, uh, Sister Hazel and, oh, and I, I can say good morning God <laughs> in the midst of a time when brother the world's in chaos and I, I take it serious I try to wash my hands and do the things I don't want to be a burden to somebody or hurt somebody but I've got trust in God that he'll take care of me he'll take care of my family that Joe brother that he was a man that brother that feared God that stayed away from evil that prayed for his family kept his eyes fixed on God and when trouble came he stood the test when trouble came, he told the mark, he kept his eyes yeah, he might have got a little weak in his faith and didn't understand it all, but brother, he never cursed God, and he kept his eyes on God Amen. and brother, because of that, he was able to get through, Then God blessed him with more children mm -hmm. God got him through and I wonder tonight brother, listen, how about you 
I, I wonder what are you relying on this evening? <laughs> Brother, if you're relying on the news, you're in trouble. You know that? Uh, brother, if that's all you're looking at and watching, no wonder our country's in trouble. I, I, I know we need news, and I know it's not all bad. I understand that. But, brother, if that's all my mind's wrapped around, uh, brother, is what's going on here, what's going on there, a uh, Facebook here and there, uh, being worried about this, we need to have our hearts fixed on God. Right. I thought about Billy Graham said this. He said, listen, I don't put my trust in Washington. Amen. He said, I don't put my trust in the United Nations. He said, I don't put my trust in myself. He said, I don't put my trust in my money. He said, I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. When everything else shatters, He will be there. And so tonight I wonder, brother, have you humbled your heart down? Have you called on the Lord? Have you made Him the center of your life? I wonder, have you done that today? And brother, I thought, thank God that's all we got to do, Brother Brandon. It's not a hard thing. The book of Romans said if thou, uh, chapter 10, verse 9, Brother Bill Ruggles, amen, has read it many times in the Sunday school hour. He said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, mm -hmm. thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, there it is again, there's that word, man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession has made. I wonder tonight as you're listening, as you're hearing the word of God, the devil said to you, let me take away those things and he'll curse thee. But I tell you, he, brother, listen, he judged him wrongly of his character. You know that? He had his heart fixed on God. Yes, brother, he said, naked I came in and naked I'll leave. And by the way, that's the way you're going to leave. You know that? You go ahead and take your most prized possession. I'm getting ready to come to a close. But I'm going to tell you, you take your most prized possession, Brother Adrian Rogers said. And he said, you stick a sticker on there soon to burn. Right. Honey, let me tell you something. It's all going to burn and go away one day. But the Word of God will stand forever. Sure. There'll be a day I'll be glad that I stood in front of this camera. There'll be a day I'll be glad that I traveled all these miles to right. preach His Word. There'll be a day I'll be glad. I mean, I'm glad now, but I'm talking about at the end of the journey of life. When God, when it's appointed unto man, wants to die, and after this, it's the judgment of God. Right. And brother, I'll be glad when that day comes. I told Him here at the church, I've been called Beavins, Belvins, Belevins, <laughs> Bavins. I've had every wrong word uh, uh, my last name called. But when that roll call comes, brother, he'll get my name right. Amen. Amen. He'll know exactly who I am. And I'll be able to stand before him with two clean hands and a pure heart. What Job did today prepared him for tomorrow. I wonder what are you doing? I wonder, are you trusting in him? If you're not, you need to. If you haven't done that, you need to call on his holy name. God bless you, and I hope you got something from it. Amen. 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 We thank Brother Mike for that wonderful message. And, uh, we got so many scriptures in the Bible that we can see how God takes care of his people. So uh, trust and pray that you got something out of it if you're sitting there tonight and you're lost. All you got to do is do what he said. Do what he said. Humble your heart down. Ask the Lord in. You will not be sorry. You will not be sorry. All we ask you to do is let us know. And uh, we want to rejoice with you. So uh, let us know and continue to stay with us. We'll be back tomorrow night at 7 p.m. All we ask you to do is be much in prayer for us. We love you and God bless you.